Hola, people. Don't think I know Spanish. I know like 10 words, 15. Slowly learning. Try me again in about two years and let's see where I'm at. Okay? You'll know I'm there because I'll just do a whole video in Spanish. But I'm having some mad moments tonight. And I'll explain what that means in a little bit. First off, oh wait. There, now you can see me better. But I'm blind on this whole side of my face because the light, it's a bright light. Don't stare at the bright light. Doing the video like that is no different than doing it like that. So we'll just leave it like that and I'll live. Um, we're talking Mercury 9 again. Last segment I showed you, I had the whole bottom stage done. Business end is done. Okay? I need to clean it up with a toothbrush to get all my sanding out of these grooves. And then get rid of all the oil from my hands off of it. And it'll be ready for paint. Before I do that, I have to finish the upper stage. I took a toothbrush to this and got all the sanding residue out of the joints. No, I didn't. I did where it mattered. I'm going to have to do more work on that. I'll do it, though, before I paint it. But um, we're going to talk about this. <clears throat> Mad moment. Okay. Stop and think for a second. You will notice in an earlier video I showed you this. This was an experiment. Mixing up colors of all clad paints, seeing what effects I can get. I tried this masking agent with it. I did three different layers of paint on this. The base layer was Tamiya. I wanted to see if Tamiya paint affected this stuff. It doesn't. But also keep in mind I'm not using the regular Tamiya thinner. I'm using the lacquer thinner. Not their normal thinner. That might have a little something to do with it because I noticed when I was working on this, that the black paint, I used lacquer thinner on it. It stuck to that model a heck of a lot better than the silver paint did. Because I cleaned up more than one area right here with silver paint. I was just using, I will admit it, 91% alcohol. Just wiping it off. Okay, because that will just take to me a paint right off. And I rubbed it over this black paint on more than one occasion, and I really had to scrub to move that black paint. So the lacquer thinner really gets, lets it bite into this plastic, which is what you want, okay? So I know this stuff works. And conventional wisdom with lighting models is you got the little light bulb inside the model like this guy. That's what he's for, lighting up the model, okay? This is going to sit up there, all right? And you've seen it plenty. You've seen this thing plugged in and powered up. We're going to do it again. All right. And some of you who have been watching and paying attention probably noticed pretty quickly that I don't have any lock block inside this model. None. See, look at that. There's no light block in there. Okay. There isn't any. There's a reason for that. I mean, you can see the light's blocked where I did the seam filling. All right? And you can see there's a big light block right there because there's real thick, heavy plastic parts there. And I'm going to try an experiment with this. We're going to try some fun methods of light blocking. Something that's not conventional wisdom. Okay? Another thing that's conventional wisdom when lighting models is to cut all your windows out. Okay? And I'm doing that on this, and I can tell you, it is a royal pain in my rear. In fact, I'm having to do some things to restore the squareness of those windows that I don't like. You can see some brass in those windows if you look carefully. Alright? That's how I'm getting around the squareness of the windows. I'm doing brass inserts. It's going to look good anyhow because windows have window frames, and it's just going to be a window frame. I'm not worried about that. I gotta do the same thing on this one yet. Okay. But that's neither here nor there. I cut those windows out following conventional wisdom. You will notice the windows on the upper stage on this are not cut out. You also notice that there's some windows down in the lower part of the upper stage. They are not removed. Reason being is I'm gonna try something different. What I'm going to do is mask off those windows and then paint my light block on the whole outside of the ship instead of the inside. 
Um, I think sometimes you guys are doing the light block on the inside while well, you're doing white paint on the inside to get the light to reflect around on the inside. This thing's bright enough up here at the top that I don't need to worry about the paint reflecting around on the inside of it. Okay? I just don't. If you take a good hard look at that, she's bright enough. She does not need to have the light blocked. Right? You guys can see that. There's no need to block that light. Especially if I can get the LED aimed correctly in certain spots like that. Alright, those windows will just light right up. <clears throat> now, the problem is masking this thing. And again, that's where this came in. This works with my preferred paint method. This was a test to see if it works with my preferred paint method. And see if I can mix some different colors of paint together to get certain effects. I can. This is water-based. Okay? I've got other uh, liquid mask and well I wanted to use that to be honest with you these other ones are kind of a pain to work with this piece right here comes from a um, alpha fighter from Mac not Macross Robotech it's Legolas or something like that that's the proper name for it I don't know I could probably spell it Anyhow, it's in my spares bin because it was missing like five parts, and five parts missing, I can't really build the model. One of the parts was the canopy. I could probably build it in guardian mode, but not, not in flight mode. So I pulled this, yanked it, and I'm using it as my test piece. What I did is I wanted to see if I could get that stuff, and we're on full zoom right here. I wanted to see if I could get that stuff in the panel lines and I did and it's only in those panel lines I can see with my naked eye I can see that those panel lines are bluish and you can see it right there if I get the light just right and that mask is nowhere but inside those panel lines so what I'm gonna do is show you how I did that we're gonna do part of this on video so you guys can see how I got the mask only in the panel lines where I want it instead of being messy and all over the place. Remember, this stuff is water-based. I have some Windsor and Newton um, liquid mask. Yeah, right here. I have some of this stuff. Art masking fluid, Windsor and Newton. This is ammonia-based. I don't want ammonia all over my house right now. So I'm using the water-based one. I have a little tub of water here. I have some Q-tips. And I have one of my favorite paintbrushes. Since this is water-based, I'm not really worried about effects. You know, if it's going to affect my paintbrush. No. The ammonia-based stuff, it don't touch my favorite paintbrushes. Carpet Monster must be really hungry tonight. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. And again, I did it on a test piece, so I know it works. I haven't painted that piece, and I probably should have, but that's neither here nor there. I'm so far behind on this contest build that I can't wait and try painting that and see if it works tomorrow. So we're just going ahead full steam. I got a little bit of it on my paintbrush. And what I'm going to do is paint it in my windows. Now, these windows here are fairly large, and it's probably going to paint right in those windows with little or no trouble. Okay? I'm being a little messy on purpose. I'm going to paint it in these windows down here. These windows are the ones I really decided to do this with. Okay, I got that stuff on there the way I want. Now I take a Q-tip, dunk it in water, and I get some of the excess off. I just wipe it, spinning it lightly, across the top. Okay? Now I take a clean, dry cloth and just wipe it. Now I'm going to repeat up at the top. Now the top up here, these windows are bigger, so I'm liable to vacate them. I didn't. I was afraid I would. 
I'm probably going to do one more application on those windows because that looks a little light in there. It is. But let me zoom in and let you guys see what I just did. Because you watched. You can see I've got the masking fluid only in those windows now. Okay? Yeah, I can see a little bit of it got in the panel line right here. But that's easy enough to clean out with the fingernail. Especially once it's dry. And then the windows at the top. It's there, it's not as heavy as I'd like it, so I'm going to do more than one application. But it's in there, and it's masking those windows. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mask this. Once it's masked, I can finish putting this thing together. So I'm going to have the Mercury 9 itself assembled tonight. And almost ready for paint. I just have a teeny, I've got to mask off these areas right here. Then she's ready for paint. Which means I can focus on that command center. Because I've got to get this thing done. Alright, hope you enjoyed this segment. I will be back later as soon as I get this done. Alright folks, let's see what I have done. And I know the camera is going to see it better than my naked eye will. Okay, and I'm going to check it again in a little bit. I got the windows masked. I'm going to let that dry up a little bit and then I'm going to make sure that it's only in the windows. And it looks like I'm outside the windows a little bit in one of them. Yes, I masked that ring. Those are masked. And those are masked. So I'm going to have to fix these windows a little bit up here because they're not the, perfectly the way I want them. But they're really, really close. Two out of three of them look good to me right now. I'm trying to bring it in a little closer and I shouldn't have done that because it's perfect right there. Yeah, two out of three of them look good, so I'll have to fix it. It doesn't need much work. Once that's fixed, I put this thing together. Happy dance. That's a lame ass happy dance. All right, I'll be back. Looks like it's together. It's not. I just spent 15, 20 minutes working on trying to figure out how to get this thing to go together. It's not glued. I need to glue it yet. Here's the problem. Okay? These three fins are not identical. Each one is very different and they're all keyed very differently. Okay? I could figure out which fin went where, but I couldn't get them in the right orientation for this thing to go together. They're in there now in the right orientation and and what I'm going to do is pull them one at a time and glue them and then put them in there. <gasps> oh yeah, that was me just going, ah, because, yeah. See these fins down here? I just pushed down and the whole thing went, <clears throat> the fins in the bottom went like that. They're okay. So first thing tomorrow, I am building the stand this thing rests on and getting it off those fins so that doesn't happen again so when if you buy one of these be very very careful of these three fins each one has its own keyed spot and it will not go in properly unless you get them in the right spot the directions don't tell you this yes they are all numbered differently it's parts 9 10 and 11 but they don't tell you which one goes in which slot okay I had to figure that out on my own. It was interesting. So I'm going to get off the camera. I'm going to get the glue. I'm going to pull one fin, glue it, put it in. Pull one fin, glue it, put it in. It's the only way I can think of doing this. But before I do that, I, got, I just got to see this. And we're going to do this on camera. I got to see how this is working. It's got the overhead. Power her up, and yeah, the rocket's going to light up the way I want it to. Yes, you see the big blue area right there. It's blue for a reason. Rockets, the windows are all going to light the way I want them to, which is what I was hoping for. And yes, I did get the windows all masked. Okay? And I did get them masked the way I wanted. So I'll probably do that one more time tomorrow. And then... We're going to get her cleaned up and primered. She's going to be primered tomorrow. 
let me get off here and get gluing so I can get my going to say something get my rear to bed there you go no profanity hope you guys enjoyed the preview I will be back tomorrow I have to kill the audio in the background of this one. We're at Red Rocks Amphitheater. Lots and lots of different concerts have been held here. And in the backdrop, at night, you would have all the city lights of Denver just showing. This would be one hell of a place to see a concert if you ask me. What do you think, Nelly? Yeah, I'm trying to recreate the Beatles concert here. 1964? Yeah. <laughs> they built this place in 1940, 1941, right? Lots and lots of concerts here ever since. In fact, after this clip, I'm going to put a list of the concerts for this year. A little video clip of that. And again, look at the backdrop you have for these concerts. And on the sides, you have these huge red rocks just sticking out of the ground. With a family restroom right there. <laughs> It's important to have a family restroom, not just a restroom. <coughs> this is cool. It is. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the view in the distance. There's downtown Denver. Never mind the rain coming down on this thing. <laughs> There's some suburb suburbs. Yeah, I'm not holding the camera real, real steady. But that's because we're on extreme zoom right now. A bit more steady like this. 